We are now outside of uh, Circle K again. This tends to be my uh, base, my uh, uh, starting position nowadays because simply because Circle K they've been doing a great job. We have four, five, six hundred and fifty kilowatt fast chargers plus two. 50 kilowatt plus more from Gurfontok, more from Fortem, but I tend to use this one uh, mainly because there it's a flat rate uh, kilowatt hour uh, rate, whereas the other one is time based, and I tend to charge 100%. Anyway, back to the point. Today I will do a 1,000 kilometer challenge in Norway, so I have to make a modified route just to include as much uh, motorway as possible. So we're going to drive kind of back and forth a little bit uh, but not the same way over and over again uh, but we have to pass through Oslo a couple of times and that's why I actually chose to drive in the evening to uh, reduce the amount of traffic we will run into so uh, the car has been charged to 100% see here and uh, we will start exactly at 9 so uh, yeah in 8 minutes we'll start so I'm gonna show you guys the route roughly okay Okay, so we are here now. First, we will drive south here to the to the uh, Swedish border, and then we turn around again. I have to zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's better. Then we turn around, and then we go here to uh, Winterbro, and then we take this route, which is also a highway, uh, almost to Ørje, whatever. And then we go back again, and then via Oslo. Oops, no. Then via Oslo, and then we head towards Kristiansand. Also, lots of, uh, of more way via Larvik, actually all the way to Brukelandsea. There's a little stretch of slow-ish, but we have at least 80 and 90 so. And in the evening, we should be able to drive okay speed, but we will not go that much faster than the speed limit. And then we head back, and then the final leg is heading north. Uh, Garden one, all the way to uh, uh, almost Hamar. No, 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 I forgot. When you head north there, we have to take a detour uh, at Klöfta and then back again. And then also another detour to, uh, to the airport and back again. And then we head north to the usual stretch where I turn around. And then we go back to this place here. And that will be 1,004 kilometers. So we will do the 999 somewhere before we come back here. And I expect it to take about 13 to 14 hours and that means we'll come back here in the morning so we will hopefully avoid any rush hour or what the morning traffic uh, actually I'm not sure shit I could hit the morning traffic on the way north here uh, well we just have to see then um, but uh, yes that's the plan so we'll start in six minutes <laughs> this is going to be the corona version of the 1000 kilometer challenge and i think it will be close enough to the swedish 1000 kilometer challenge because this car is kind of thirsty so uh, i calculated that you don't lose that much by you know cruising at 110 rather than 120 you know or 130 even so yeah it's it will be close enough. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to or if I'll bother doing a, a, the Swedish 1000 kilometer because I think this one will be close enough. Yeah. And the reason why I do it is because so many people have been asking for it and I still have the car. So, yes, um, we just wait now five minutes and then we reset the trip meter and then off we go. Okay, we are on the move now. Uh, we have been driving for about 40 something minutes and uh, the stats so far is that, um, oh, there I guess. Yeah, consumption is going up, average speed is going up. Uh, so uh, everything looks normal. And uh, traffic though, we have little traffic on the way south, but on the way north, we have the traffic from this weekend, this long weekend. But hopefully by the time we get back here, it will calm down and actually uh, my plan is to stop here on the return I will stop at Rigge yeah so you know what there is a disadvantage that I take this route speed wise but the advantage with the Norway route is that we have way more high power chargers here <laughs> I can just pick any I want really especially around Oslo so um, I think Overall, this one should be more or less the same as the, the Swedish uh, 1000 km challenge. Oh, nice, smooth asphalt. 
we are now getting close to uh, the, the Swedish border and this is actually the turnaround point. It will be the first turnaround point of very many turnaround points. Svinesundparken. So we'll just turn around here and then head back again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the first charging stop. It just happened to be Shell Ås, you know, where I usually start my 1000 kilometer challenges. So we have two high power chargers here. I'm connected to one of them. I arrive at 7% and look here, we are getting 97.5 kilowatt, oh yes, <laughs> so yes, good stuff man, uh, I guess we'll do a quick one, wow, nice weather, and then we hammer it, I actually don't know where the next one is, but oh, I can watch this all day, look at that, <laughs> Okay, we already have a small problem here. I just went to the restroom, right? Uh, quick one, and then just as I walked back, the charger stopped. It stopped about 30 seconds before I came here, and then I had to restart it, and I tried again, I tried once, it didn't work, and I tried again, and now we're charging again. So, uh, you see, we, the timer has reset now. We're down to two minutes again, so. We lost two minutes, not too big deal, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's a charger or the car. This is very, very weird if it's, yeah. So, um, okay, whatever. Um, I need, I calculate I need to charge at 58%. So, <laughs> that will take almost no time. We will ride on the 77 kilowatt wave. Oops, yeah. We are now on the eastbound route. Uh, another detour we have to take uh, towards, uh, this is the road towards um, Stockholm, actually. And then we'll turn around again so this is the slow-ish part where it's only 80 zone uh, but then soon enough we'll get to the highway the, the motorway we can do at least i think it was 100 zone over there so uh let me see oh shit, we come to a 70 zone also but you see this is why i chose to do it at night because we have less traffic but still i don't go crazy high speed here so i only go about 10 10 over roughly yeah 10 15 over yeah, I'm not gonna reveal how fast I actually drive, <laughs> but okay. Charging stop number two. This is uh, Shell McDonald's Nygårdskysse. So uh, it's pretty cool. Um, for them, they have installed uh, another hypercharger, 150 kilowatt. And we also have the old ABB chargers over there, but I don't use them because over here we see the charging speed. So, um, oh, I have to adjust this one. Yeah, I'm gonna do that afterwards, but we're getting 94, okay, let me see. Gonna enlarge it, but we're getting 95 kilowatt. We came in with 8%. So, so far we're getting perfect charging stops. Now I have to find the next charging stop uh, <laughs> around Oslo. Actually, no, it'll be after Oslo. Oslo is way too early. Uh, so, so far so good. Yeah, except that on the previous starting session, you know, it's supposed to throttle at 58%, but they throttled at 50% only. So I think the battery was not warm enough. That was the first charging session. So this is the second one. So hopefully we get a good one now. Yeah, so far so good. Our speed so far is about 90, a little over 90 kilometers per hour. So it's not super fast, but I guess, okay. We are on the move again. Uh, so far 312 kilometers and we're getting close to Oslo. So, yeah, it's so quiet here, man. It's almost 1 a.m. And it's just super quiet. Yeah, I like this. Oh, so calm. So I want to do most of the driving at night. Yeah. Okay, uh, in the uh, tunnel here, um, Opera Tunnel, we have uh, maintenance, so, uh, it's actually going slow. It's a 50 zone here. So this slows it down a little bit. Yeah. I guess we lose a couple of minutes. So I guess not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. I, I, yeah, yeah. This one, of course, when they drive slow, you save lots of energy. <laughs> Starting stop number three, this is Shell Grelland. It's quite cool over here. So you guys remember, 
back in the days when I draw the uh, the Fiat 500e, I charged over there. We have 40, 50 kilowatt fast charger there. But kudos to Grön Kontakt, they have eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these 150 kilowatt fast chargers. But I'm not sure if they share the power or something. But wow, this is so cool, man! Look at this. Look at this. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should make this one the, the thumbnail. Yeah. But okay, so um, I came here with, oh actually I don't, I don't remember how many percent I came here with. But I'm just going to show you now, status so far. Uh, I calculated, okay yes, oh look at that. Okay so we are down to 40, uh, 75 kilowatt as expected. I need to stay here, I actually only need 70, no, wait, I need a little over 50 percent, nothing, yeah. <laughs> No wait, 40%, no, I need 40% something. So that means that these stops are only 17, 18 minutes long. Uh, I need to stay here only about 10 more minutes. <laughs> I feel like I'm driving an Ionic in a way, but it's just that it's thirstier than Ionic. <laughs> so by the way, over there we have the trucks, they are sleeping. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, the gas station open or not, but I can, I can ninja from here by the way. Here you see, Bjorn's got the chicken. Yes, got the chicken means street food. And that's my street food. Yeah. <laughs> and then over here we used to have Marche, but Marche, they went bankrupt. And now we have Burger King instead. Hmm. Is that better than Marche? Um, no. But okay, well, nice, nice charging location. I like this charging location. Lots of chargers and food. And then also um, on the other side, let um, just ninja it from here. There we go. Circle K, they have lots of fast chargers there. Plus, uh, not only that, but Grand um, um, Contact, they also have the same shit like this on the other side. We might visit it on the return over there on the other side. It's just insane, man. All right, off we go again. We actually charge from about 10% to 50% in 14 minutes. So, Damn! So you see, we, we added 40% in just 14 minutes. That's a quick pit stop. So this is the way to go if you want to go fast. You just have to charge often and then, yeah. So uh, of course, most people, they won't do this. Most people, they will charge for about half an hour, just like we did in the race, actually. Huh? But um, yeah, so if you're in Russia and if you have enough fast charger, then go with this strategy and you will arrive fast. We are now at Ionity Ringdalskogen. It is so quiet here compared to the previous videos. <laughs> but yeah, I have to clean the windscreen. This is a nice spot where you have the cleaning stuff right by the charger. So um, finally here I have a longer stop because this is the last high power charger uh, before I head south to uh, uh, Sundebru or Brukelandsheia. So I actually have to top up here for about half an hour. Until now I've been stopping here for just 15 minutes, stopping 15 minutes, but this is half an hour so I can finally have a hot dog. Oh. All right, so we've been here about half an hour, ah, less than half an hour, 25 minutes something. The first five minutes, it went great. And then charging stopped suddenly, right when I was about to wash the car. So I restarted the charger. So we haven't stayed for 19 minutes. We stayed there longer than that, but it's about to hit the next break point now. See, right now we are still charging faster than at Brooklands here at the 50 kilowatt fast charger because we'll get, uh, let me see. Actually, over there we should get. Ah, there we go. There. Oh, there's the. Oh, time to leave. Oh, time to leave. <gasps> okay, so uh, we are now heading south. That's the end. The south end point. Yeah. So uh, clock now is 2:45. That means we're getting close to the six-hour mark. Oh, oops. Six-hour mark. And what is the start so far? Oh. Yeah, well, we just started, so that's, we can never count once we start with, you know, kind of high battery now. 
we are at uh, 70% or something so yeah we have to count once the battery is low again so we'll see then still quite empty roads here wow look at that moon it's so big and fat today just like me <laughs> okay this is the high speed stretch oh after uh Oshkun, it just ended now oh shit okay okay all right all right so uh let's slow down here Ooh, okay, okay slow down slow down slow down so the stat so far is that we are almost at 500 kilometers. okay that's a little bit too fast okay slow down you see almost 500 we are about to hit the 500 kilometer mark and how long did it take about six hours because we have 50 percent uh, battery now roughly so it takes about six hours well okay to be exact now about six hours and 10 minutes then yes to reach the halfway mark Woo okay this is charging stop number five i think and uh, see now we are completely alone <laughs> i'm i just sneezed out oh, there's a little bit of uh, allergy here grass i'm allergic to grass pollen but anyway we came here with 33 percent we left with um 71 percent so we spent 38 percent getting here so that means that we will spend about 38 percent going back also but we have tailwind on the way back so I calculate that I need about 45% or something, roughly. Um, so we don't have to stay here that long. Yes, and the windscreen is fairly clean. This car is so, so trigger happy on uh, the, the whole, you see the, the this comfort, act. yeah, you see, it, it does that all the time. Pfft. Shit, but I have to say the yellow looks so nice, man. Oh, it's a nice refreshing color. Yeah, I like this car. <laughs> it feels like an Ionic, just a little bit thirsty. <laughs> so, um, okay. I'm not sure if I need to go inside the 7-Eleven. Hmm. See, again, it's... And then move away. <laughs> oh, broken on sale. Wow, look at this almost four in the morning and the sun is rising oh that's a nice sunrise there oh I, maybe i get a better view here. look at that oh cool Back at Ionity Charger Ringdalskogen, yes. Remember to A, B, C, always be cleaning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're getting uh, about 100 kilowatt for a minute. That always helps. <laughs> and now we're down to 95 kilowatt, which is still okay, but then it will throttle to 75. So, oof, sun is coming up now and uh, yeah, we, the problem now is that we have to get past Oslo before rush hour starts. So I, I need to rush past, at least you know, get over to Alnabru before seven or whatever. Whew. So yeah, let's get over there fast. Whew. That's it, it's just throttle now. 15 minutes stop, let's go. <laughs> okay, on the move again. Uh, this time only 56 kilometers between the charging stations. Uh, so it's five in the morning now, 11 degrees Celsius outside. Sun has come, gone up, so there's a little bit more traffic now. So uh, yeah, oh man. Consumption right now is 211. Yeah, we can spend almost as much juice as we can, as we want here, because it's just a short stretch. But this is the best solution to stop at Grelland. Yeah. And then the next one will be uh, Arl actually Arnabru. Or is God again food set? Yeah. Well, that is the that's the fastest Toyota I've seen in a long time. What? I didn't know that the Toyotas couldn't even go this fast. It's a Prius. 
Really? What? Uh, we are at Shell Grellon. First, I went to the Circle K tritium charge over there, and then it. Yeah, look. Okay, I get the same shit over here. It 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 fails on handshake or something. Uh, come on, unlock. This is weird. Uh, it happened. I lost already a couple of minutes. Um, I think we shouldn't sub subtract this because um, it seems like sometimes the car has problems with handshake which is not good, it should just work out of the box like I try with every other car I do the challenge with or whatever they don't have problems with handshake let's try again now maybe I have to kill a 12 volt battery you see, but last, when I had problem with the 12 volt battery the charge port never locked this one at least it locks but then it fails the handshake so I'm already losing, you see now it blinks like that and then it says starting the charging process and then I don't know if it has something to do with the whole lock and load, whatever it is. He's very happy with the, with the whole thing there, but see? It fails handshake. This is bullshit, man. Do I have to take the 12 volt battery again? Huh? I'm losing time here. It had such a great uh, speed going on until this thing happened again. Well, I can try another charger, I guess. See if that helps. Okay guys, I flipped the 12 volt again. Uh, it's probably a problem only with this car. We did several charging sessions without any problem and then it bugged again. So I think I will subtract five minutes because I lost five minutes because of this because it shouldn't happen with every car we test. So now we are charging, you see, we're getting 30, uh, 94 kilowatts. So back on track, we subtract five minutes and that's it, yeah. <laughs> so you might not agree with me, but I believe this is not a, this is not an issue on every two or eight. Many people actually never experienced this before. This might be something weird issue only with this car. But okay, so we are back on track. I lost count how many charging stops you have. Next one would be uh, Circle K uh, Furuset starting point. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys, look. We stayed here, we charged 11 minutes and we're about to turn 48% 48, 48 it will throttle. There, it throttled. 11 minute charging stop. What? Let's go. Ah, oh, shit. We have a small problem here. After I reset the 12 volt battery, then the trip two that I counted was reset. So it's back to 1,300. I don't know what the heck happened there. But fortunately, I recorded right before I, I arrived here that it was 669 kilometers. Yeah, one kilometer before I entered. So 669, that's what we had. So I guess I will use trip. We can count 669 plus uh, this one then. Yeah. And then we get 1,000. So, shit. Okay, whatever. Oh, we are back at Furuset. This is kind of weird. Uh, what is the time now? 6.30 So we've been uh, traveling for nine and a half hours. This is a nine and a half hour mark. So I don't remember the stats, but I will just show you guys here. Average speed and everything. So we came here with 13%. We are charging up now. We will, as always, charge to 48% or maybe less. No, 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 you know what? Next stop will be Circle K Minnesun. They have four times 150 kilowatt fast charger. Freaking Circle K, man. I love Circle K. I will gladly support them. Yeah, and Circle K gives me the best charging stop. I could go to uh, um, Circle K Dahl, Ionity, but this, no, the other one is better. So, oh, yeah. All right, so far so good. Oh. So, let me just show you guys here in the morning. We managed to pass most of the traffic now without too much delays. Whew, okay. So quite busy around here. Well, that's an ENV200. Lots of ENV200s here, huh? Okay. I'm just charging here. 
Yeah, you see, you see, some people, some smart asses always uh, complain about my parking, but you see, do I bother anyone? Do you see anyone bothered by my parking? No, except for uh, a few, a few uh, keyboard warriors. But the reason why I park like this is because the charge port is on that side. So you see, it's already kind of stretching. So if I would park here, then I would have to stretch that cable a lot, or I could use that one, plug it in here, but then I block that charger. So this is actually the best solution. Of course, I can park more in the middle here or something, or if I park it, no, it doesn't. So this is, the, this is always a dilemma with uh, charging is that uh, you don't want to put too much stress on the cable. So um, all the smart asses who complain about my charging, they never owned an EV before. Yes, once you own one, you will understand. We are on the move again and look at the traffic going into the city. This is exactly why I started late at night because I would avoid that. So I've actually been dodging all the traffic all the way now. So, so far so good, right? Yeah. Oof. Okay, and then by the time I get back, then that stuff wouldn't, won't, won't be there anymore. So, yeah. Hopefully it won't be there. <laughs> uh. All right, we have now passed the 10 hour mark. Yes, yeah, seven plus, yeah, it's 10 hour mark. And if you take this one, 119, well, it was 116 at the 10 hour mark. 116 plus the 669 we had before the reset. That means uh, average speed is 78.5 um, kilometers per hour. We are already now slower than Ionic, uh, but it's not that fair to compare because Ionic was driving faster. Uh, okay, all right, let's just finish this then. Okay, airport run, yes. Going towards the airport and then back again. So I calculated that this this counter here needs to be 331, yes. So when we are 331, that means 1,000 kilometers. <laughs> okay, whatever, yes. Let's go to the airport and then back again. All right, this is going to be the second to last charging stop. So we are now at Ionity Dahl, you guys recognize this. Um, we've been charging here for a little while and I figured that this time we have to charge to 73%. So it's going to be kind of slow because further north here we have one more high power charger, but that's 15 kilometers from here. You know, that's too close. From there, nothing. I mean, we have 50 kilowatts. So in that regard, uh, we could, of course, hammer it and then stop at the 50 kilowatt and then charge up a little bit. But it's actually better to stay here longer. And then we skip the next uh, 50 kilowatt and then we go straight to the to Minasun, which has four times 50 kilowatt fast charger. <laughs> um, and that will be the last one. And then we go home. Whew, man. So. Every stop has been so short. I barely have time to eat something and I don't want to eat while I'm driving. Mm. Okay. We have about 10 more minutes and then off we go again. Actually, five minutes, yeah. Wow, look at this. Mjösen is so quiet today. There's no wind here. Huh. Okay. Well, that, that, that there could be wind on the way back. <laughs> So we'll see, but oh, final run, right? Nice weather today. It will turn worse in a couple of days and then it will rain by the end of the week. Oh, when I test the DS3. Hmm. Oh, look at that, oh yeah, look at that nice view. Woo. This is the last charging stop. We are at Circle K Minasun. So, um, 
Here, this is the worst charging ever, but that doesn't matter because nobody is driving past there. They can drive past there anyway. And again, I don't want to put any strain on the cable. So, um, they moved the chargers over here. You see, we have lots of chargers there. Oh man, kudos to Circle K for uh, adding so many fast chargers. So, right, I can show you guys the surrounding. Miosa is right over there. E6 goes there. So this is right by the highway, nice pit stop. And I calculated that I need 42%. 42 is the magic number. Yeah, we're 15 now, so go, go, last stop. Oh, yes. We have now hit the 12 hour and 15 minute mark. Yeah, we have to subtract five minutes because of the little uh, problem, charging problem, but okay. So at 12 hour and 50 minutes, 15 minutes, the Ionic uh, went through Sweden and back again and finished. Uh, we are still, oh, so, sorry. We are still about 40 kilometers away. Yeah, so we are kind of, in a way, you are 40 kilometers behind, but keep in mind that this is a Norway route, a slower Norway route. Yes, we're gonna finish. <laughs> Just don't know when yet. This is it, the final countdown, yes. So the funny thing is that this car it's just it has so low precision on everything uh, range and everything and also the trip meter just says 330 we have to wait for the 331 break point yeah 331 is the 1000 so now we are 999 wait we are 999 yeah come on 331 come on there, there, three, three, one, 1,000 kilometer reach, woo! <laughs> oh, and that took, uh, if you subtract five minutes, it took 12 hours and 40 minutes, yes. Oh, well, we are almost at the, uh, the Circle K now. Oof. We are back at the starting point now, yes. Oof. All right, what a challenge. This is the first time I did uh, a Norway 1000 km challenge. And you know, already before I did it, I knew that this one would be slower than uh, Sweden, simply because we have lower speed limit here. We had to pass Oslo twice. And also, not only there, but the speed limit in Norway is in general lower than in, in Sweden. So, okay, the Ionic was 25 minutes faster, but I actually believe that if I did this, in Sweden, with the E208, I would match Ionic's time. 12 hours and 15 minutes, yes. That's my claim, based on spending 4,000 kilometers in this car. <laughs> That's funny, because when I picked up the car, it had 3,300 something, uh, and now it's at 7,000. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if I'm done yet with this car. I still have it for two more days. So, we're gonna see, yeah. But, so anyway, the takeaway from this is that uh, the E208, because of the charging speed, okay, it's kind of thirsty, but it has the good charging speed. And you can actually take it on a long trip. And if you are in a rush, it will be faster than Zoe and uh, once again, the new Ionic. I mean, this car even beats the Zoe and the new Ionic in those cars in Sweden. So just to put things in perspective, you know, so it's a damn good car. It can go long trip. It's super comfortable. Uh, it has a weird, some weird features that I don't like, like it doesn't show you state of charge, but you kind of get used to it. You, you find a way to figure it out, <laughs> at least for me, because I'm a ninja. But if I have time, I could do this on the 1000 kilometer challenge, but I'm not sure. So yes, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.